mentioned about the unity of Christ's body. And we're here to have one church. Not a lot of churches. There should be one church. Yes. And Peter mentioned about God's promises. And there are many of them in the Bible. In fact, the Bible is full of God, God's promises from the beginning to the end. An English pastor a number of years ago collected all these promises. There are over 800. And put them into a book called The Promises of God. Promises are covenants. They're covenants that God has made with individuals and with us. And we expect God to follow those covenants, to keep his promises. We stand on those words. We stand that he will do what he said he would do. But as in many things in the Bible, there are areas of fine print. There are also some warnings with some of these promises as well. You see, God is good at keeping his promises. But how are we very good at keeping ours? We often don't keep our covenants that we make. We don't keep covenants that we make for ourselves. We often don't actually keep anything that we make for ourselves. And the, problem, the, and the real example of this are New Year's resolutions. How many people actually keep New Year's resolutions? No. But this is actually a covenant you make with yourself. I, I'm going to lose weight this, week, this year. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to do a lot of things. But then New Year comes and nothing ever changes. Is there any problem with that? I don't really know, except one is that if you can't keep a covenant with yourself, it makes it harder to keep a covenant or a promise you make to somebody else. And it's very easy to tell somebody that you're going to be there to help after work, or to help on the weekend, or to meet them for somewhere and not show up. You just, people just do that automatically now. It's very difficult. It used to be that when two people made an agreement, a handshake was all you needed. Now you need a team of lawyers. You know, we don't keep promises that we make. <coughs> the Bible says this in Matthew 5. It says, when you say something, let your yes be yes and your no, no. When you say you're going to do something, do it. If you're not going to do it, then say, tell people you're not going to do it. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. So we break promises to ourselves. We break promises that we make between each other. But the third thing is when we break a promise or make an oath to God. I swear to God I'll be there on time. I swear to God, I'm going to do this and get it done. Okay. Now you're not just making a promise between each other. Now you're making an oath involving God. And the Bible does say stuff about this. But I say to you, Matthew 5, But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is God's footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall you swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your speech be yes, yes, nay, nay. And whatsoever is more than that, is of the evil one. You see, we don't keep the covenants that we make, although we expect God to keep his. 
And one of these covenants that we often break is a covenant of communion. Communion is a covenant, a promise between God and us. And when we take communion, it means here we are making a promise back to God that we accept his sacrifice. And therefore, therefore, it says in 1 Corinthians 11, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And therefore, eats and, and drinks judgment to himself. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. There is a warning in not keeping promises we make or covenants we make with God. And then, of course, the real difficulty is when we make an actual promise to God. And you've heard people say this before. If God only helps my child through this, I swear I'm going to do this to such and such. Just help me get through this surgery and I will do this. I promise God that I will do, I'll be better. I'll go to Bible study, I'll go to church, I'll do whatever they want me to do, but I swear that I'll do this. That is a promise that you make to God. And this is not something which you should take lightly. Acts chapter 5 talks about a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, who made a commitment to sell a possession and give it to the apostles, give it to God. And they sold the possession, but they kept part of it for themselves. They didn't give it all as they had promised to God. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your power? Has thou not lied unto men and unto God? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down dead. A number of hours later, his wife came, and she did not know what had happened. And Peter answered her, said, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes. She lied as well. And Peter said, how is it that you have agreed together to try the spirit of the Lord? The feet of them that have buried your husband are at the door, and they shall carry you out. This is just a story from the Bible. I had a lady a few years ago who was very sick. And when I took her into the hospital, she swore that if I ever get through this, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to start back and do this. I'm going to start back and be, do what I should be doing, but I'm going to, if I swear to God, I'm going to do that. But she did get better. She got over the illness. And she went home again. But she never did go to church. Within a year, she was dead. She dropped dead suddenly. Coincidence? I don't know. But when you read all of this about keeping promises to God, because God keeps his promises to us, when you hear this, it should give you something to think about. <laughs>